almost everyone is here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 27. Uh, happy Thursday to you all. Um, please remember that this uh, call is, is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel for you to check out later. Also, please remember to ask your questions on Menti uh, while this call is happening so we can have a good Q&A session at the end. Uh, before passing the word to engineering, I would like to quickly tell you that uh, yesterday I went to uh, Tech de Monterrey, which is one of the university that we have uh, uh, one of our partnerships. Uh, and they were super excited to uh, have and review our new white paper with some of the uh, directors from the research department, innovation department. So this is great news uh, that we have the support from universities in the academic side. So super excited to also uh, share this news with you. So now I'll pass the word to Luca from the engineering department. Luca, if you would like to please go ahead. Hi, Angie. Great news. And uh, thank you. Hello, everybody. So uh, last week we had uh, massive news to share with you from uh, the engineering department. And I'm refer referring to the new white paper that was published on both archive and ePrint. So check it out if you haven't checked it already. Well, this week we have uh, we had uh, there was another huge news that came out uh, a couple of days ago not related to engineering, but uh, from a BD perspective. So I leave it to the other people after me. Uh, speaking about the paper, we noticed that uh, it's making some noise in the industry. And uh, that is great, especially among uh, people from the academic world, people from uh, universities, uh, zero knowledge space in general, and so on. So we all share the paper with our contacts and we are starting receiving very positive feedbacks. Uh, please help us spreading it even more. This, for example, is uh, the tweet that the marketing uh, team posted uh, as part of the marketing communication strategy. And uh, let's all keep in mind that everybody, uh, I mean, we all can do the difference here. Little things have big impact. For example, my post on LinkedIn got more than a thousand views. So encouraging everybody to do the same. Uh, let's see what else we have in relation to the sidechain consensus implementation. This week we finished with the code review of the sidechain state and the sidechain wallet. Uh, we also reviewed uh, many other uh, components like the regular transaction extension. And uh, we started the review of the uh, history uh, in relation to the Ouroboros changes. Moreover, we have been working on uh, backward transfers uh, for what regards the sidechain SDK side. While for what regards the, the next uh, deprecation cycle, Zendi 2020, uh, the release was published. All our partners and exchanges are being uh, notified for a second time. Many thanks again to the marketing team for covering the blog and social media, to Angie for contacting basically each partner one by one, and Chronic who is now notifying the top exchanges uh, in these uh, uh, days. Chronic may talk more about it, but let me say that wallets will be also be soon updated uh, to be compatible with Zendi 2020 as well uh, as Explorers. Um, I would like to pass it to uh, Alberto now to see if uh, he has any other uh, update to share with us today. Please feel free to continue here, Albert. Oh, yes. Thanks, Luca. Maybe just a couple of words more about the pull request uh, just approved today uh, about the consensus changes uh, implementation. Uh, so um, they are quite, um, let me say, uh, important pull requests because uh, we introduced the, um, the uh, let me say, the definitions of epochs and uh, the calculation of uh, uh, who are the forgers. Uh, eligible to emit uh, blocks in the in the next epochs. So um, this uh, implementation included the possibility for a user to delegate uh, a forger for um, uh, let me say being eligible in a, in the next epoch, and included all the changes that are uh, that were uh, necessary for keeping track in a efficient way of the list of eligible forgers. So um, this uh, implied modifying the, the history component part of the, of the, of the SDK. And uh, 
currently i think that uh, uh, we are we have um, let me see we are at a good step in the in the consensus implementation uh, keeping uh, uh, keep talking about the, the, the consensus uh, we are currently formalizing uh, also the changes that are uh, that we are going to apply to the Ouroboros consensus to keep um, um, let me say track of main chain forks because uh, as you can remember uh, our sidechain nodes are not obliged to follow uh, main chain but just the just the sidechain forgers and this obviously uh, makes the uh, the sidechains much more uh, let me say uh, usable uh, for a, from a um, let me say regular user perspective, but this means um, let me say put in the in the in the sidechain block the the, the um, uh, information that are necessary to keep track of this, and so um, we have been uh, studying on a model that uh, allows this, and uh, we have been studying on uh, on the uh, security implication of this, and uh, currently we are formalizing it before applying these changes to the um, uh, to the implementation of the consensus. Okay. Uh, Going on uh, with the extended model, I mean the one of the uh, session paper, as we anticipated in the last weeks, uh, we have been uh, already working on the implementation of it. And in particular, uh, currently we are focusing uh, on the gadgets uh, that are going to be used in the circuit, and in particular, uh, the gadget for the VRF, uh, so the verifiable random function that would be used by the forger to provide proof of being eligible uh, for submitting a, a specific block. And uh, related to these, uh, we are also implementing both the, the uh, I mean, we already implemented, but I mean, we are keep refining uh, the gadget and the primitive for performing Ajnor's signature. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you. And thank you, Alberto. Uh, so that is it for now. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca and Alberto. Now we will continue with Chronic for more infra updates. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, so 2020 is out. Um, and uh, I'm pretty happy with um, a lot of the work that was previously done manually now being um, taken over by the CI CD pipeline. Now, uh, it, it didn't quite get finished before this release, um, but uh, we have made good progress here. So uh, we are currently building for all of our three target operating systems in the CI pipeline, being uh, Linux for um, AMD64 for now. ARM64 is going to be um, added in the future, macOS and Windows. And we are also running the full unit test suite on uh, Linux and macOS. And... Um, then the releases get uh, get packaged, um, and generally the, the in the future we'll also sign uh, releases on the CI as well as um, deploy the packages automatically to GitHub. This step is still to be retrofitted, but it's already a huge help, and uh, developers are also already able to uh, make sure that the unit tests and the code that they're currently working on uh, pass. Um, the Docker images have already been published for 2020 for BitCore as well as the normal version. Uh, Swing Wallet uh, will be published today or tomorrow, and uh, Sphere by Horizon. Uh, we are working on a on a small release candidate right now, and um, uh, want to release it just to make sure that uh, all the code that uh, doesn't relate to the new Zen version is. Um, is working all right, um, and everybody is happy with that. And then uh, before the deprecation, we will be doing another Sphere release uh, with the 2020 binaries bundled. And uh, for node hosters, uh, please be aware, uh, and also for pool operators and exchanges for everybody, that the deprecation is uh, bound to happen on the 25th of February. And um, so please update. Um, for node hosters, we we'll probably will give everybody the benefit of the doubt um, and enforce a few days after the deprecation, but we will enforce it. So uh, make sure you update. Back to NG. Thank you, Kranik. Now we will continue with the Spencer uh, with the updates from the help desk. 
Good Thursday, everyone. The metrics have been posted into the text channel. Uh, something of a typical week for the service desk. Uh, the usual breakdown as far as the um, issues involved. Uh, customer satisfaction is holding steady, 4.3 out of a possible 5, under 23 user reviews. As always, more tickets regarding the faucet than anything else. Uh, which is indicative of the usage, I think, more than anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. Now we have Gustavo for more updates from the UX side. Hey, everyone. So this week, along with Marco, we've been working on the wireframes for the Sphere sidechain model, get everything ready for beta. And uh, regarding the faucet sprint, we've introduced some new features, but I am not going to tell right now. We'll have Jonathan from the growth team to bring us that update. And it's all. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Gustavo. Uh, so Rowan is out of the office, but we have Bano here to cover uh, from the BD side. Hello, everyone. Uh, we have quite a great news today. So as you already know, BD team is constantly trying to get them listed at large exchanges and custodians. And we are pushing strongly on custody front this year. Uh, and custodians are being uh, used by exchanges and large institutions, as well as the individuals who prefer to delegate the custody of their funds to funds to others. And it would be uh, great for our director of BD, Roman Stone, to be here for this announcement because it has been a huge effort led by him and his perfect English would also be super suitable for this. But I'm also very happy to say that Coinbase Custody, which is one of the largest groups of custodians out, out there, if not the largest, now supports deposits and withdrawals for Horizon. So huge shout out to them. Huge thank you to Coinbase Custody for supporting them. And that's all from us. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Vano. Now we have Lucy for the marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Uh, so for marketing, uh, we sent out an uh, update for the mandatory software updates, uh, 2.0.20, um, uh, like Luca said. So the software is available to download now. Uh, please make sure that you update before February the 25th. Uh, and then also our uh, roadmap is updated on our website, uh, which includes our plans for 2020. Uh, and our uh, last Totally live stream is on our blog, podcast, as well as LinkedIn uh, slide share. So um, you can uh, revisit and then uh, play on other than two. Uh, our uh, uh, February newsletter sent out yesterday. So if you haven't received it, uh, then you may not be on our mailing list. Uh, and you should sign it up so you don't, you don't miss out uh, any summarized updates every month. Uh, we have an ongoing giveaway of an inclusive sidechain t-shirt uh, for a chance to win. All you need to do is to watch our sidechain SDK alpha demo video on our YouTube channel and announce a very simple question. So the last day to, en uh, to enter is tomorrow. So if you still, uh, you still, you should still have time to watch the video. Uh, it's a reoccurring, uh, reoccurring activity, uh, and we already have three winners uh, from previous rounds. So check out Twitter feed for information about this giveaway. Uh, and then we have also just released uh, the French version of our Academy. Uh, so we are doing uh, also a giveaway, uh, you know, about uh, reading, uh, visiting our French Academy, and then you will be hosted on our French uh, yeah, uh, social media. And then so uh, if you uh, speak French and understand French, that would be a great chance to participate and make sure they follow um, our French handle on uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook as well. So just a little update about our recent social media growth. Uh, our community size on social media is growing very fast uh, and it has already grown a lot since our last live stream uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, where we uh, uh, had a detailed growth. So on uh, our social media, on uh, YouTube channel is approaching um, 15k subscribers and then it was just uh, uh i think it was a 10k just a couple of weeks ago uh and then twitter followers is over uh, 55k so it's really we are uh, we are growing really rapidly so that's it from me see you jonathan hey can you hear me very clearly 
Oh, perfect. Okay, awesome. So on my end, uh, next week, I'll be sending out a newsletter specific to the new white paper. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, it'll link to the blog and provide a little summary to everyone who doesn't have time to watch the video or read the blog. Um, in terms of node hosting, we've added a new node hoster to our official node hosting page. And we have um, we have a, a new person who will be listed uh, next week as well. So you can do you can go to horizon.global backslash node dash hosting. And if you're interested in having a third party host a node for you, this is a place where you could see vetted node hosters that offer discounts to the community. So we have uh, so far ultimate nodes and uh, node launcher. And then next week we'll also be adding uh, Pat Heyman. So that's exciting. That list is growing and we hope to see it continue to grow in the future. If you know anybody who hosts nodes is reputable and would like to offer a discount for the Horizon community, uh, please ask them to reach out to me and we can have them added to the page. Um, in terms of the faucet, two very exciting features. First is our Changely integration. So we have a little button that says Buy Zen right underneath the claim button. That's continuing to generate people who are purchasing Zen. So whereas people typically think of the faucet as an outflow of Zen, we're seeing very um, successful results where people are actually using the faucet to purchase Zen, not just to get free Zen. So that's really exciting uh, because that shows that there's ways for people who come to the faucet to get further engaged with the community. Um, and lastly, a very exciting, uh, very exciting feature for the faucet, one of the biggest complaints that we had was that you need to use a Gmail address to log in. So we now added a feature where you can log in with Facebook. So you don't need an email account at all. You can simply log in or register a new account with your Facebook. So this should make it super easy for people who don't have access to Gmail accounts, particularly to log in. We're hoping to see the traffic and the users grow because of, because of this integration. And this is just the start. We are planning to add three, four different options for people to be able to log in or register without the use of an email address. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy and Jonathan. I have to say uh, congrats to the whole marketing team because I saw the Instagram uh, when you guys opened it a couple of months ago and it was like 20 followers and now it's like uh, bigger than uh, 3,000. So I was like super surprised and just wanted to say congrats. Um, okay, now let's have uh, Rob for the Q&A part as well as some updates and comments. Thanks, Angie. Yeah, I've got uh, a couple thoughts and then uh, certainly happy to answer. Q&As. Um, I recently read the Zendi white paper all the way through. Parts of it are intimidating to me, and overall, it's outstanding. Alberto and his IOHK academic collaborators, they've created a work of exceptional elegance. Um, but my next thought after reading it is, why hasn't it been implemented already? And that thought is unrealistic, though, because software development progress takes a while. It's tempting to look at what other projects have announced and wonder why Horizon doesn't complete the roadmap faster. The thing is, it's easy to announce something, and it's a lot of hard work to deliver quality software for the purpose. We've got a significant amount of software development going on in parallel, and by delivering a product like Sphere and then iterating and improving it, we get good and consistent results. We get real-world testing, too. Mm -hmm. Another example is the node tracking and payment system. It gets better consistently and continues to run with the large number of nodes we have. The combination of the short-term uh, small software projects and large game-changing developments like the sidechains with the Zendu cross-chain transfer protocol and the Lattice sidechain with the Ouroboros consensus model, it's outstanding and it's important. The white paper delivery is a significant milestone. And even better is that the software development for the implementation of the new sidechain model is in progress and scheduled for testnet delivery in 2020. And I, I know I say this a lot, but decentralized sidechain construction is a really important step to realizing the original vision we had from the beginning when we founded um, founded Zen. So private transactions and communications, decentralized government governance, representative voting for Zen owners, uh, and decentralized node tracking and payments, making the entire system and uh, everything a, de a decentralized but well-working system. So good software takes time to develop 
test uh, and iterate. Uh, the team we've got is not common. It's not something that's easy to pull together. And, and when I say team, I, I mean the entire team. So everyone on the team works to make the software development possible. And I'm sure our, our, our scientists and architects and developers and uh, project management team realize that. So the team working together well has a real world value that shows up in many places. One aspect of that value is the track record of doing work the right way, the way that creates a lasting system that, that's usable and scalable and, and people will use. Part of the value that we have as Horizon is in the shared vision and the team of people that are working together to make that vision a reality, the daily ongoing efforts and results to move it forward, and another is the many days and months and years of building trust in the team. One of the best ways to build trust is to say you're going to do something and then do it. Our team's at the point that we do what we say consistently and, and well. So we should celebrate these milestones along the way, and, and, and I'm really excited about it. The publication of the Zendu white paper is a really significant milestone. So congratulations to the entire Horizon team. All right, Angie, I'm ready for questions. Thank you so much, Ralph. So uh, the first question is, how much of a sidechain application will run on the node? Would there be options if the app needed more storage? Okay, so the question I heard is, uh, which of the, the main... So there's going to be a number of different sidechains. Some of the sidechains that we develop are going to be the ones that run the basic protocol for running Zen. And I mentioned those earlier. Earlier, we have the option of moving the main chain private transactions and, and messaging to a side chain. Uh, certainly, the decentralized government governance with a, a type of voting uh, for Zen owners on where the direction of the treasury funds go, and the decentralized node tracking payment. And from the get go, where we said super nodes are going to be responsible for running these these side chains, these protocols, that's part of the super node payment. Um, it, it's why there's a higher staking requirement. It's fewer of them, and, and they get uh, paid more. So if that means that uh, supernode operators have to add processor or memory or drive space or bandwidth to be able to handle those side chains that do those functions, that's part of running a supernode. That's my vision uh, for that anyway. As we go through and develop that, not just my vision, it's, it's the team's vision, obviously. Um, as we go through and develop all that, uh, we'll, we'll see how that matches up with reality. For other side chains, third party side chains and things like that, what we envision is having a marketplace where people that operate uh, and want to operate side chains um, are able to uh, download that side chain software and the applic management software to be able to do that on their node. Um, so uh, the way that I see that it would work is that something that running a, a side chain would have to be able to interface to the main chain somehow uh, and make sure it gets all the blocks. And uh, then whoever is running the actual side chain itself is responsible for compensation to the people that are running that, that side chain nodes. Hopefully that answers the question. Next one. Oh, good. You've got them written down here. Sweet. Yeah. So the, uh, the second question is, will node holders have future benefits? And I think you explained that uh, in one of the videos great chance to yeah um i mean the node holders certainly get compensated so uh we we pay for the service that's provided and and certainly the the super nodes running the side chains and the secure nodes they maintain a copy of the uh of the zen blockchain uh they provide connectivity for wallets they provide uh, uh redundancy for the, for the blockchain worldwide and, and keep everything up and running and they're important in the consensus because um, transactions that meet the the protocol are passed along. Transactions that don't meet the requirements aren't passed on to the miners. So um, that that that's a payment. Uh, node holders should also be able to vote without having to take their stake off off the node. Um, but I'm not sure that we need to that there's going to be even more benefits other than you know helping to run part of a system that is awesome. That's a pretty good benefit right there. All right, next question. So what's the benefits of using Horizon versus another? So I'm going to talk about something that we don't have yet, the ability for people to run the sidechains. So 
the benefit of running a, a Horizon sidechain that can be constructed in any manner um, is that it can run as fast as the sidechain is developed uh, or, or is, is designed to run and that the hosts on it can run it. The servers uh, that are running the uh, node software can, can run it. But the advantage is an entire blockchain doesn't have to be developed just to have that smart contract or sidechain capability. There's already a token, Zen. It already has a market value. There's already a large value, of pe- a large group of people that are running servers, uh, nodes that have the Zen blockchain software on it. So like 50 to 80 percent of the work of creating a new blockchain is already done. So people are able to slot into that system. You can see how that's very popular on something like uh, Ethereum or, or EOS because the blockchain doesn't have to be created just to be able to have an application that can run and do things. So very similar uh, with Horizon, uh, but the way that the system is architected and what we're working toward is to have a completely decentralized worldwide system with nodes ready to go and uh, scalable uh, so it doesn't by doing things on side chain, so it doesn't bog down the main chain. So I think there's going to be a lot of advantages there. Furthermore, the way that the Zendu crossing transfer protocol is configured, as well as the the lattice side chain, is that the person who designs the, the side chain application is able to uh, put in a small economic benefit for the designer, um, and then the uh, people that run it are able to do that as well. So every stage of the process of designing and operating the different uh, sidechain applications has uh, economic incentive structures built in uh, so that you know it, it should run well and people should be motivated to run nodes and keep things up and going. Thank you, Ralph. So uh, these are the top three questions of the day. Uh, there are more questions that we don't have time to answer uh, in a live call. These questions and answer them in the weekly Inside the Chat channel here on Discord. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Angie. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, great uh, weekly Inside and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.